Hello, I'm George Dunekian. Welcome to this new program on Facebook. We're calling it Dunekian. Uh, let's see if that evolves and changes. But uh, we promise you that uh, each and every week for the rest of the year, we've got some very interesting guests to entertain you with. We're going to talk about all manner of things, whether it's news, whether it's uh, debating a different issue that's uh, affecting each and every one of us in our day-to-day -day lives. And we'll also cover subject matter that uh, appears in the various platforms, whether it's television, uh, in, uh, in mainstream TV, or whether it's the issues that are impacting us um, uh, in the newspapers. And of course, we're only about 500 odd days away from the next state election in Victoria. But if you like the program, make sure you uh, mark it as such. In other words, do like it, and uh, importantly, share it with your friends. This is Danikian on Facebook, a new style of TV program. How lucky am I and how lucky are you? Uh, first program for Danikian on Facebook and our first guest, the one and only Ross Wilson. I'm honoured to be your first guest. It's a fantastic project you've got here. Uh, mate, it's, uh, it's a very big deal. Yeah. Uh, and more importantly, thank you for taking the time to join us. My because pleasure. for me, can I take you way back? Yeah, please. Way back, you know, into the days uh, uh, when Daddy Cool was something very special, something fresh, but something very Australian. And of course, Mondo Rock came after that. But for me, when I yeah. first heard it, it was the sound of Australia. Well, good. I mean, I'm glad that had that flavour to it. I mean, Daddy Cool for me, I'd been playing in bands before that, but that was my first big success and it was a very focused kind of a sound. Did you and get I was a lucky sense? to have those other guys in the band. You know? Did you get a sense that suddenly everything you'd been doing before was going to click? It was, it was when everything congealed because I'd been playing, like I said, in band at school and yep. we played sort of, you know, R&B like the Stones kind yep. of R&B. Yep. And then uh, through that I discovered a lot of blues music and had an interest in soul and, and, and R&B. And then I started another band and we, that's when I started writing songs. So for a couple of years I was getting better at writing songs. But when you first write songs, you tend to fill one song with about five ideas. And then by the time I got to Daddy Cool, I realised one idea, one song, you know. And so I went from these long kind of progressive rock structures down to like, you know, three and a half minutes, four minutes, two and, minutes. And you know when you did that, the radio station suddenly came alive because it's, Eagle Rock was a perfect song for Brecky, perfect song for morning, was perfect song yeah, for afternoon, per perfect and, song. and perfect song at night. Well, it's a perfect song for everything. Like, I've, it's been done by the Wiggles, <laughs> and, but it was also in Wolf Creek. So it's like, it's got the full spectrum, you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, talking of the full spectrum, um, over the past 30 odd years, I've traveled the world, I had the good fortune to do that yeah. at, for work and for pleasure. And I was in Paris at a soccer game uh, at the Parc des Princes to see Paris Saint-Germain play in a European qualifier and half time and I'm sitting there going, and it's Eagle Rock. I know that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here we are, Dallas Cowboys again, uh, a few years later. Um, it's an opportunity wow. uh, in between quarters and the boys are getting, you know, again, Eagle Rock. And I'm thinking, and then it dawned on me when we went backstage yeah. to meet some of the cheerleaders, half of As them were do. Australian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they they picked the music. So, you know, yeah, Australian driven. There is another connection though, because I do Go believe on. that um, uh, Eagle Rock did strike a chord in, in Texas and, and it was a really big hit in Houston. Though we didn't find that out for a while, you know. Oh, well, yeah. anytime you mention the Eagle, yeah? The Eagle. And it can yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we have the West company. Coast Eagles there, we'll <laughs> sing it whenever they kick a goal. And uh, also the Manly Sea Eagles have played for them a few times. Well, take us through. Take us through those early years. You got a chance to get established. We did. Yeah. We did. Daddy Cool. Yeah. Uh, then well, came. Well, Mondo Daddy Rock. Cool was was a kind of a like a side project. I just we, we all did for fun, and it you know went on for a couple of years. We made a few albums, but um, and we toured the states. But it came to the point where I was going. Well, I've kind of done that now. It's sort of like going to rock and roll high school. <laughs> You know, and then I said... So not a case of you having a short attention span. It was, no, no, you're, it was you're moving like, on. Well, I've done that retro thing now, you know, I don't want to do that forever. So um, I, then I formed a, a band called Mondo Rock. Uh, in between, I produced Skyhooks, and they were anything but retro. Oh, I was going to say, now, yeah. does, uh, does Redman 
uh, still feel yeah. warm and cuddly when you guys yeah, discuss spoke, those days? I spoke to him the other morning about this thing we're doing down in St Kilda. You know? Good. What yeah. are you doing about St Kilda? Tell me. There's. I've well, been hearing the rushes and the noise in the background because we live at yeah. uh, Port Melbourne. We're in the same same area. Well, that, that something's happening at Jacka Boulevard. What, Jacka what, Boulevard. What's happening? Well, the the, the Palais Theatre has been refurbished and back to its former glory. And right next door. Uh, where there used to be, way, way back when I was a kid, there was another entertainment kind of lunar park, or like a little lunar park. Um, then, they, then they built the palace, yep. that concrete bunker, and yep. then that went the way of the, you know, the west. And, yeah. and so there became a, a, a car park again, and they called it the St Kilda Triangle. And inspired by the, um, the Adelaide Fringe Festival, which goes off every year in, uh, like it gets around April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, it, they've set up uh, a fringe festival there. So, do we for get about a month. do we get the street food? Do there's, we get the yeah. entertainment uh, shows, there's the tents, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, there's cabaret, uh, oh, wow. pretty wild cabaret stuff going on in an actual Spiegel tent. There, there's a Spiegel tent in, in, installed, and for guys like me, they've it, they've created this thing called the box, which is a great big square thing you know, decorated on the outside, but you don't know what's inside, uh -huh. like it's a surprise uh -huh. area. And, Hello. And so we're, we're playing there. And uh, then there's a giant Ferris wheel that, and, you know, rides. So how, how long are you, you playing there till? No, we're just doing the one night. Yeah. One night? Yeah, one night stand. But this whole show will go on, what, till, have, through, through yeah, July? Yeah, they have different people every night. There's a, a thing called Blanc de Blanc, which is the cab cabaret show in the Spiegel tent. Fantastic. And then there's rock and roll and various things in the box. So you want the Spiegel or the box? You spoke of uh, moving on after high yeah. school, right? Yeah. In terms of music. Uh, where, where do you take the music? Where does it go next? Because there's always, well, I do have as we evolve do, in yeah. life, and as we change, and our desires um, and our needs change. So well, I'm way music. overdue for, for an album, <laughs> right? And it's just me being lazy, really. But I, I, my last sort of uh, album of original material came out Gee, about seven years ago, I think, and I've I've got a whole lot of songs that I want to record. So it's just and I've, and it's got to the point where they're nagging me. You know, you must record me. So I'm on the verge of getting in the studio. Take us back. You said nagging you. Yeah. Uh, is is this the creative process it for is. Ross Wilson? If they it nag is. you enough, you it's, go all right. I'll let it out. Yeah, yeah. You you get a backlog of. I always have more songs yep. lying around, and I you know. But then I have times when I don't write. I'm out touring and I go, gee, I'm feeling a bit lazy. You know? and, but then you accumulate experiences and ideas and suddenly it's like, ooh, ooh, I must write. And they all come tumbling out. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And is there one idea that we should look forward to? Is there one nagging? Well, I'm going is back to my theme? roots again. I'm going ah. I'm, I'm to do probably an EP first of sort of bluesy stuff. Yeah. Now, an EP because in my day was five songs, yeah. well, or is it going to be three be songs? About like six or something. Okay. You know, five to six, four, I don't know, I haven't quite decided yet. So where do, we, where do we see Ross Wilson if we want to see you? Oh, well, Live. I play all around Australia, you know. Uh, like this weekend, I'm playing down at Jacka Boulevard, at yep. Matt, what they call Map 57, and I'm in the box. Right. Uh, the next day, I'm in Wagga Wagga, the Wagga Wagga yeah. Club. Yep. And then the following day... I'm in Brisbane as the post-fight entertainment <laughs> of, of uh, Manny and, and the Hornet. Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So then that's in a stadium, but it's all being beamed into the casino there. So depending how long yeah, the fight yeah. takes, so, so Jupiter might be over. So saw an opportunity to bring, the, to bring the Wilson. No, no, not Jupiter. It's the Treasury one. Oh, the, the Treasury. Okay, 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 okay. really okay. beautiful old building, the treasury, old treasury building. And we're going to be playing there, and all the people can come in post-fight and jump around, and we'll play Eagle Rock. Yeah. Well, um, listen, I hear a little birdie tells me that you're off to uh, the warmer climbs come August, September. Is that true? A big project, yes. We've been planning ahead on this. We're take, I'm taking off all of um, September and a little bit of October and going to Athens, and then briefly, and then uh, to a big... Uh, I guess you'd call it electronic music, but bass culture music, they call it, in uh, Croatia. That's going to be, goes for about four days, and mm -hmm. I've been there once before, it's fantastic. Three days in Be Venice, so we're going to check out the Biennale. The Biennale. And then Take back, a mask. Yeah, mm -hmm. back to uh, Athens and get immersed in that for uh, a week or so, and then down to Mykonos, 
and a whole lot of friends are meeting at this area and my beautiful bride, Tanya and I, are going to renew our, our vows. It's been 20 years. Mate, uh, happy anniversary. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, safe travels. Thank you. But more importantly, uh, we can't wait for the next chapter in the Ross Wilson Thank you. story. Yeah, well, it won't be long now. And, uh, and, uh, the, so you do have a bit of problem these days, is like getting your music out there because it's always better when people... We'll bring it to us and we'll know, put it on yeah. Janiki. Okay, you're right. Done. Fantastic well, stuff. Well, Thanks so much. Thank Good on you. That's Ross Wilson. Thanks. Welcome back to Danikian. And if you're wondering, and this guy looks awfully familiar to you, there's a very good reason. It's a George. Uh, no, it's actually George Campanaris. Yes. And the last time we did this, actually get you in as a guest. Can you remember when it was? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Because we always okay. talk about Take we see back. each other. We talk about uh, the Steve Weizard show uh, when we work together. And you know that I got a lot of stick over that particular uh, series because they <laughs> didn't want me to have too many ethnics around. Can you believe it? I was told that if I, were, if I wanted a Nick Giannopoulos and George Campagnaros... So you picked your guests. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Your episode. So and let's, I let's explain it to everyone. You were hosting an episode of the Visard show when he couldn't do it. A long time ago now. Or a, a week of shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said, oh, I'm going to have some of my boys on. I'm going to well, that's what they told me. Nick and George. And I wanted to have Simon Palomaris as well. And they said, no, you can't have too many ethnics. I said, I beg your pardon. So oh, I didn't know that story. Yeah. Oh, well, it gets better. Okay. And you know what these, uh, my salve was? I had to give them another Aussie name, Kate Fitzpatrick. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. She's so back we had, on TV, Yeah, yeah. She? So we had the blonde. Yeah. And we had the, the three amigos on the other side. Yeah. yeah so yeah. even then I got stick. Yeah. Because I... I and, and the then ratings, we, and and then the ratings we were a went bit, like that. We were a bit cheeky too on that episode, weren't we? I cannot understand why the Greek uh, archdiocese had so much room to complain about. You did a song. About a car. A car. Uh, an Australian car to boot called a Monaro. Yeah. Hey, Monaro, that's yeah, my car, yeah, which that's is Craig, right. Craig McLaughlin's. But, but the was problem it? was. It was his song, and we did a parody on that. You did a parody, but more importantly, what shocked the entire marketplace was that none of the original words fitted the subtitles. Oh, you, right. Because you took it somewhere else. Oh, righty okay. Which is perfect okay. with what you do. Well, that's comedy. Comedy is dangerous because it basically satirises what's going on in the real world. Okay, well, we're living in an exceedingly difficult climate now yeah. because there's so much political correctness. It's perfect How time do you for guys comedy. navigate? How do you guys navigate that? Well, look, comedy fires things up, but it also calms things down. For example, when we first started doing Acropolis Now, yep. then Greeks, Italians you know, a few Lebanese, a few Maltese, we were the enemy. Now it's like the Sudanese and, you know, and, and, and various other Whoever else is on the, totem, on the totem pole. Yeah. Then we were the uh, uncharted uh, territory. Now you were the recent arrivals. Yeah, the recent arrivals. So until and we you were did, born here. Until we did Acropolis Now, people went, oh, well, those Greeks are pretty tough and pretty scary and I don't know what they're thinking about. We did a show, Acropolis Now, where we had some characters that were fun-loving, charming, uh, wacky, crazy. And you were just speaking about yourself. And that was just me. And people were going, oh, they're not, they're not that bad, actually. Oh, the next door neighbour's Greek. I should go over and say hello. I like the show. I might like them too. So fear comes from the unknown. Correct. Once you know what you're dealing with, it's not that scary, you know. It's kind of like... Um, before before I worked with all the boys from the Fat Pizza's show and the you know the Tahir who's mm -hmm. Turkish, mm -hmm. our to us Greeks, the yep. Turks are the natural enemy. You know, he's one of my best friends. Until I met him, well, that was kind mate, of going on in my system. Mate, now the Turks I have a whole are the enemy. Community of Turks who were part of our extended family. Yeah, uh, and. I have nothing but admiration and support for them. They do some tremendous work. I don't agree with their government. Yeah. I mean, well, I, that's I, the I still... They I probably st don't agree with their government. Yeah, well, in fact, there are a succession of Turkish governments I still disagree with. Yeah. But I also have a disagreement with the current Australian government because for this, in this day and age, can you believe it, it's 2017, and there was a recent movie just released called The Promise, yeah. which talks about the Armenian genocide, the Pontic Greeks who were massacred at that time, and the Assyrians. We lost nearly three million people, three yeah. and a half million people. Yeah. Yeah. And yet we have this extraordinary incident or scenario where the Australian federal government is towing this particular line 
that they don't want to say it was a genocide. And my understanding is this is simply expediency. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to upset the Turks, the Turkish governments, yeah. for fear that they might close the door and stop us from going to Gallipoli, mate. Well, it's all politics, isn't it? It's, oh. it's politics. Nothing to do with know. the people. You know, it's, it's, all not, about it's not governments. about honesty. Politics is, you know, they call them honest people. They call them politicians. Okay. But surely there must be times when you go out and you do the comedy mm. and the feedback is like, oh, my God, you get... You know, we talk about football snobs. Yeah. Are there comedy snobs? People say, there are, oh, there are you comedy shouldn't snobs. be talking about that particular uh, product well, the, the or rule, that particular well, subject. Well, the rule should be you can talk about anything you want. Comedy sends up anything. If you want to send something up, if you think that something's wrong, if you want to point something out, if you want to point something out about yourself, if you want to have a go at anything, that's where comedy comes in and does it really well. Because if you don't have someone laughing and you come in angrily, then it becomes something else. It okay. becomes, okay. you know, warmongering. Right, if fomenting you trouble. Something, if, you think you, if you think something's wrong or you think something's stupid, or something's awkward or something should be pointed out, if you do it in a fun way or a comic way, and sometimes comedy is pretty ugly as well, it calms things down. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You did something really exciting uh, a number of years ago. Now you went and did a show called uh, Wogs Out of Work. Wogs out of work, right? Yeah. And before Wogs out of work, we were doing stuff before Wogs right. out of work. Before but, it wasn't but I brought, known as Wogs. But I brought my then wife. Oh, sorry, she's still my wife. Uh, Di, blonde, Australian blonde, yeah. and I brought her to the show, and she'd never seen anything like it, and she loved it. Was she? Loving? She locked in. Um, because think... she learned more about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, why did she love it? Quite because, possibly. Well, because she learned more about her suburb. Because she. You know, when, oh, they're not bad. Or no, she actually went, enjoyed, oh, crazy, or? she enjoyed your energy, your honesty, honesty. and your cheek. Energy comes and your with, cheek. Come, and your energy's cheek. part of the And deal. your cheek. Cheeky, well, that's comedy. The, the fact cheeky. that you put, you and Joe Avardi put her in the front seat yeah. and made her part of the show yeah. when she went to the girls' room. Everyone's talking about the, the blonde chick, Di. Yeah. And Di's going... Oh dear, I've become part of the, uh, the, uh, the subject matter. And but, she loved it. But I wasn't the first person to do it. No, no. I wasn't the first person. You know who did it before me? No, no. Uh, uh, um, Bill Cosby. Uh, okay. Um, Let's, uh, not Eddie Murphy. Let's not talk uh, about Bill Cosby. Let's not talk about Bill Cosby. Well, no, he's known for other things. Let's talk about his comedy <laughs> stuff. Uh, you know, no. um, uh, Abbott and Costello, yep. Jerry Lewis. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Chaplin doing the Charlie girl. Chaplin. And he did it without speaking. Oh, the first one, dude. And he did the it Marx without... Brothers. Yeah, fantastic The Marx characters. Brothers, you know, they were, they were Jewish, but one guy was playing an Italian. Correct. Was he Italian? Correct. He, play, he played... Chico. He pl Chico played it. He was Jewish, but yeah, he was yeah, playing yeah. Italian characters. They're all Jewish. Characters. They're brothers. So he's sending up Italians. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was pretending to be Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly now, right. if you did that now, people go, oh, that's so politically incorrect. Well, it's, well, well Red, Red, you... Red got into a whole lot of... We're talking about Red, uh, Red Simons now. Getting right. a lot of trouble because of... Uh, a show that allowed blackface. I mean, that's right. I, I, and, and he got in trouble for something else too on the radio the other day. Wow. Now, okay, I've heard the okay. whole interview. Yeah. Did you think it was out of? I out read of the time? line, and he said, "I think what he said." You was read the, wrong the line. Thing. Did you see the interview? I didn't hear the interview. Okay. The interview. the interview is completely innocent. Yeah. But when you read it, it's like for me. Read it's cheeky though. You, you're taking it out of context. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the great problems with the transcript is not, not what the words are, but how they're said. Yeah. And you're an actor. You know, we should add, uh, this young man has uh, featured in the Underbelly series. Uh, you've been in uh, Flying Very, Doctors. Various musicals. You've been in the original uh, Acropolis. Now, uh, yeah. by the way, he created a character, brought to life a character called Agamemnon. But as they well, I created the character too. I mean, I, did was, you? I was one of the creators of the show. Okay. Okay, so you know. Even only, though I don't hold up so the mango, that's me. I was one of them. <laughs> so you not only created it, but you brought it to life. But for yeah. me, how beautiful, typically Australian, yeah. they grabbed this beautiful Australian uh, Greek word called Agamemnon and they made it meno. Yeah. You, you, you shortened yeah. everything, eh? So I now, you know, made a mind that character called, that I played. Odysseus, yeah. right? Yeah. Who you could roughly translate into the Ulysses. Yeah. When he went to school, his brother tried to enrol him, and the teacher said, well, call him Les to make it easy. Odysseus, Les. Yeah, no, Odysseus, it doesn't work. Les. Doesn't when work. They get, yeah. yeah, it's a terrible thing, it's but... Now, let me tell you about Mimo. Go. Do you know where I got the idea for Mimo? No. Okay. He wasn't even a Greek guy. It was the Italian guy 
that was running Pellegrini's. You ever been to Pellegrini's? Yes, 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 yes. And that guy used to abuse people and they used to come into the restaurant to get a coffee or a pasta. They only had five pastas you could choose from, yep. nothing else. Yep. And he used to abuse people and people loved it. They came back for more. So That's where I got the idea. Gluttons for punishment. Me. Yeah. So gluttons for punishment. So that, that is a real life story. That is a real life character that I just went, that would be perfect. I'm going to do him in the show. It's been a fantastic journey. Uh, when you think yeah. about how, what you had to endure. Now, you were born in, in Australia. Were you born in Richmond? Yeah, I was born in, well, down the road, in the Queen Victoria uh, Hospital. Is that right? On Lonsdale Street, which was, once upon a time, the, Greek the Greekest street <laughs> in Melbourne, in Australia. <laughs> well, it's now it's almost Chinatown, you know. Yeah. Um, the Greeks have left. You know why the Greeks left? They went to Oakley. Did you hear the story? No. Why they went to Oakley? No. They Should... left because they turned the, Q, the QV hospital into a shopping centre the shopping centre was so big, there was no light on the street, and the Greeks didn't want to sit in the street when there was no sunlight. I mean, we were out of here. So and we've now we went, so oh, we've no. now found a mall in the heart of Oakley. So they've gone to Oakley because the sun shines in Oakley. They've got a big mall there. It feels like you're in Athens. Why wouldn't you go there if you're Greek? If you're going to spend a whole day drinking a frappe, you might as well go somewhere where it's sunny. I took my wife to Thessaloniki, <laughs> and she still hasn't recovered. Watching the police with a frappe in the right hand the cigarette in the left and directing on traffic. horseback. And, no, 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 no. Well, no, the ones we saw in Thessaloniki were actually standing, right? And they were directing traffic. And my wife to With this side. With a cigarette in the other. Correct. Hand, that's and the like... frappe in the other. I'm sitting thinking, wow, these guys just won't quit. They're just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, you're now, a family so you, member. You're you saying that now. Are you being political, politically incorrect by saying what you just said? What did I just say? You just pointed it out. What did I just say? You said, well, you you basically said the Greeks are a bit lazy. They like. To drink. I didn't suggest that. Well, they're drinking yeah. their frappe and their cigarette just, while they're at work. Well, I just thought they they could do they're they're multi multi skilled. They can they no, don't have to sit down on their backsides. They can, they can actually stay at work. Well, they're not and direct traffic. You're saying they're not professional. No, most professional. Mate, they can do so everything. You can take anything. You can change anything. You can. Someone can say a joke, and you can go, "Well, that's." Uh, Have you pick the most obvious joke? Um, pick a pick an old an old joke from when we were kids at school. Okay. okay. Georgie um, Porgy was was the, the the one I used to get. All right. Well, Georgie well, Porgy pudding and pie. Kiss the girls and well, made them cry. Named, yeah, they yeah. Made fun, they made fun of your name. Correct. Okay. Yep. They've gone for a bit of a parody, a bit of a pun. Yep. yep. Uh, little fat boy. That you little make everyone boy. cry because your name little... is George. Correct. Exactly. There's right. a bit of. Uh, you know, ethnic sort of bashing there because your name is George. Mate, I was so excited when Prince George yeah. was not only born but named George. I'm thinking George is a resurgence. There you go. Yeah. George isn't just royal. a royal name. Yeah, it's a royal it's, name. Yeah, beautiful stuff. You know. Now, come on. Okay. It's been, well, let's pick another one. All right. It, uh, it's been quite a journey for you, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you ever imagine 20 odd years down the track you'd be where you are today? I'm just working it out as I'm going along. <laughs> I'm just like, you know when you, I don't know, you, you know when you, you're just playing a video game and you just keep going? It's just like, what's the next? I just, I, I curse myself sometimes for, for picking this job, becoming a, what sh terrible that's a, job. But it's not a job. Who would do this? But it's not a job. I ask my boys, I've got two boys, an yeah. eight year old and a six year old. Yeah. Peter wants to be a sportsman, but it, definitely he's going to be a politician, that guy. Okay. He's just Mr. Persuasion. So guy. he's not going to play for Richmond? He will play for Richmond too. Oh, okay. He will, he will do, yeah, no, he, wants to, he wants to play football as well. Okay. And he's a sports loving. By the way, for those of you that don't know, he's one of the biggest Richmond fans on the planet. Yeah, crazy Richmond. We, we've actually been to the football together, except I didn't get that close to him because he was in the supporters' bay and waving flags and going nuts and directing um, uh, all this, all, all manner of language at the opposition fans right, and right. the players. Right, right. Uh, the other, your other son, what's he want to do? Well, John told me the other day, I said, what do you want to do, John? He says, I want to be a comedian, Daddy. I went, oh, no. Yeah, Nakis wants to be a comedian. Oh, no, I thought we got away with, you know. Now, that. tell me, have you ever been in a room and you've gone down a particular pathway and you've sensed the audience not with you? All the time. <laughs> we did the last gig we did together. So what was that about? So was we that did, about, was that the about, first one I did, we did, we did both, was, didn't we? Was you for a, you was brought a, the house down? It was the, the opening FFV function? Yes, yeah, the Victorian Football Federation. Correct. Yes. It was their business uh, platform, it, their new business, business platform? Functions. The first one yeah, I did yeah. was fantastic. You superstar. We got along like a house on fire. The second one we did, it's like the house went on fire. It's like, what was but that I about? think we had 
the front of the room was very corporate. They were on their phones. They were just uh -huh. like they weren't interested in comedy. They okay. didn't. They didn't want to give me anything. So can you can you so see was, everybody what's going on? Yeah. So I was I was hanging it on them for using their phones, and I think that annoyed them even more. You even okay. said to me, I think you probably got them offside at the start. You know, they were not. Yep. You know, they weren't. Yep. The guys in the back kept it up. The Greeks they loved and it. the Italians and the whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it, and they were laughing Screaming. even more because the guys at the front were. We're giving we're, me we're anything. Yeah. Man, this guy is sweating on stage. Plus, I had two scarves on too. What was it? It was Greece versus yes, is it um, Greece, Australia. Greece, Australia. Australia. Soccer Greece. 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 So I was sweating. I was working hard. They were giving me nothing. And the back of the room were giving me everything. And it was like... Fantastic. No, I just kept on digging and digging and digging. Sometimes, you, you know. But that's a corporate gig. And the you people aren't there and for you. Learned. The people are there because they've been invited or they okay. have to be right. there. Okay. Yeah. So what's next? What's the next project? Or what are you currently doing? So many projects, um, where do I start? Uh, this month I'm doing a Woggy Christmas in July with a couple of mates, you know, just a fun <laughs> thing to do because we're waiting for the, for the real tour to start again. So, but that's all over, that's in Adelaide, that's in uh, Melbourne. So you do the Fringe? I did, we did the Fringe, but we did the Fringe and all the festivals with our new big show, which is um, Straight Out of Combo. Okay, Straight so Out of Combo. It's myself, Joel Vardy, Tahir, <laughs> from the Habib yeah, yeah, show, correct. Rob Shahidi yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. Lebanese legend. So we all put together a show called Straight Outta Combo. Um, great show, we all do stand up, we all do sketches and it's a great. We need to get a Vati in because he does the best um, uh, impersonation of, of his dad yeah. anyone could ever have. Yeah. If you're Calabresi especially. Oh, he channels the it. language and the ability to say, how does he say cash? Cash. Oh, Kesh, or, you know, Kish. he just but, does it well. But he, but he, he does, does it so well. beautifully. He transforms into the character. And that character yeah, is featured does throughout the whole thing. He does so, more, doesn't he? Um, but he, he's, he's loved not only in Australia, he's loved in Canada. Huge, he's loved huge. in the UK. He does he's tours in New, New York at the moment, yeah. uh, doing shows. And uh, he's also our producer, so we're very lucky to have him, you know, on board and also running the show. We don't have to worry about the flights, the accommodation, Fantastic. it's all so, so okay, if I can, if we can fast forward six months, uh, all right, what, so what do you want? Do you want a grand final for appearance for uh, for Richmond? Yeah, yeah, that's happening. Okay. It's so, Melbourne, so that's Rich happening. All right. Melbourne, Richmond grand final. Um, Carlton ninth. Um, and what about so, Collingwood? Collingwood twelfth. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Do you know, more. you know, the cameraman is just Collingwood heaven. Yeah. yeah well, look, my mum goes for Collingwood and. How did you go to Richmond from mum being Collingwood? Well, in 1960, when my mum and dad came out in the same boat from yep. the two opposite sides of Greece, one from, my dad was from Kalamata, they were the Richmond supporters in Kalamata, <laughs> and my mum was from uh, Katerini in the north, Correct. and they're all, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. was Balk from, you, you know. You got it. So, yeah. uh, up there, so, plus my mum lived, the first place she lived was in, uh, in, uh, I think it was Keel Street in Collingwood, near Goodness. the football ground. So, so they were all Colling supporters. So she's brought in. We were Richmond supporters. They live near West Rich Richmond Station. So, um, yeah. Just fantastic. And that was, and she hasn't changed her okay. team. So grand time. final appearance for the for your beloved yeah. Richmond. Look, there's something else. What else is happening in six months? Go I don't on. just do comedy. I do other stuff, as oh. we talked about. Yep. And I've got a show called uh, The Songs of Countdown, which I'm doing with Toddy Goldsmith. You know Toddy? Songs, I do. From the Shantuzis. Yeah, Miss, my one of the great Shantuzis. My keyboard players from Big Pig, the other guys from Roxas, the other guy. It's like a super band, and we're doing this daggy show, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, unlike uh, uh, most people in New York, or maybe they do, maybe they do know. Uh, this guy can actually play music. Um, yeah. Knows his way around. Uh, a bit better than Russell Crowe. Uh, Russell, uh, if, if you think you're a better muso, come on the Danikian show and show us. No, he's not better than me. Yeah. He's not so, better than me. He thinks so, he's funnier than me, too. He's not funnier than me. But he's so, good at serious but stuff. But is there serious. any more uh, acting involved over the there's, next six look, months or, yeah, or look, year? Look, there, there's auditions that I'm always trying out for. Yeah. There's all sorts of things. But Tony Nicolacopoulos, you know yep, Tony? Yeah, I know Tony. Nick very... Race in the Wog Boy movie. Yes, man. yes. Well, Tony is a fine actor and he's also in Alex and Evie. Yes, you did a great job. Uh, but he and I are writing a new show 
Uh, it's called The Life of Byron. That's the working title. You haven't got any room for a former newsreader, have you? No, 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 no. Um, cool. Unless you play it while I'm on holidays or something. So oh, okay. I've written it. Cool. It's a bloody hard yeah. role because yeah. you are on, or I am on stage Constantly. for the whole thing. And what happens, it's about my character, Byron, is, is faced with the dilemma that he's got to put his mum in a nursing home. Oh, well, his brother yeah. wants her to go to the lawyer. We've, wants to we've been through this, by the way. My character feel, feels a bit guilty because he's never been with his mum his whole life and he wants to look after her. It's a, it's a thing that we're all going through and we're Correct. all going to go through yeah. very, very soon. Yeah. And we're all going to be, you know, our kids are going to be doing that for us very soon too. So he's faced with that dilemma. He goes to the back of the house to clean up the bungalow. You know, he goes through a baulo, an old, what would you call it, chest? chest? yeah. And he pulls things out. And as he pulls things out, he becomes that... So the uh, first thing he pulls out is a Julia outfit. He becomes young Byron yeah. in, in, you know, in prep, in a new school, not being able to speak English. So it brings back all those wonderful yeah. memories. Pulls out a guitar. He's a 12-year-old playing ACDC. He pulls out, you know, a what? bumbada. No. He talks what, no him. Eagle Rock? We've got Ross Wilson joining us. Well, we haven't finished writing it. We, we, we could chuck in some Eagle Rock. Oh, I reckon you, you should. <laughs> Maybe do it in Greek. He does. Well, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're going to do all, that, on, all yeah. those tricks, all those bits and pieces, yeah. But it's also pretty serious as well. Okay. So it's got, so it talks about, you know, getting married, well, it talks about living in the country, so it's it talks a bit about of melancholy. Divorce, talks about, you know, death. Bit, and, bit yeah. of melancholy, bit yeah. of... Bit I don't of know if you ever saw a show that we did called The Last Proxy, which is straight after Wog's Out of Work. Uh, I can't remember. About, I'll, have a look. I'll have marriages. a look. Yeah, yeah. It's myself. Oh, arranged marriages. Yeah, it's myself. They're in the news again myself too. And Kat, who? Arranged marriages. Well, who's getting arranged? No. <laughs> who's been arranged? What do we make a phone call? No, no, no. no. Put that point? down. Put that down. <laughs> no, no. It's just it's, it's just the subject matter you keep uh, coming up with. Uh, it just constantly has this ability to end up in the news. Is this me? Well, it's just the way I am. It's the way I'm wired. I, I see everything in news what are you is about? in banner headlines. Are you explain to me what you please explain. Please explain. Please. <laughs> um, uh, you, you spoke of arranged marriage. Set, by the way. It's beautiful. It, it is. It is an extensive too. Do you like the colours? Yeah, I love them. Yeah. Fantastic. Blue and white. I'm colourblind. All I see is green. <laughs> <laughs> let's but leave nothing no uh, Let's let. And not hey, nothing no Hey, we water. share another passion. Really? But nothing no cost. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know. you're your city, aren't you? On victory. City, victory. Yeah. Carlton, Richmond, Richmond. Arsenal. Uh, Tottenham. Oh, Tottenham. Even worse. There you go. And we beat you this year. Yeah, no. There you go. And speaking of beating, uh, I think yeah. we've run out of time. So can you promise to take us up in six months' time? Yeah. And, uh, and bring, us, in, bring us the Premiership Cup, eh? What, I'll bring not? in the Premiership Cup. I'll bring in the script. Bravo. In fact, I'm going to invite you when we do our first... We're going to, the first thing we're going to do with this script that we're writing now is going to invite people. our friends, yep. people, yep. that can just go, all right, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, I reckon you should do that. I reckon you should do that. Okay. So we're going to really listen to... You know, our our people, our environment, and just before we just little research, little research, and we, you know, and I hope this 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 script could become a movie, could become like a, a Shirley Valentine or you know, one fantastic of those sorts of movies. Fantastic. So, uh, but it deals with growing up in Australia as a Greek. That's well, this man has helped a great many young um, uh, men and women of different uh, ethnic per persuasions but you know, to grow up you and know understand. What? Comedy is fun. Comedy is groundbreaking. Comedy is controversial. Uh, comedy is sometimes politically incorrect. But when you do comedy, try and teach people something. You know, even if it's you know, teach them to brush their teeth, teach them to be nice to people, teach them uh, not to vote for the, the terrible person but the nice person. Whatever you do, <laughs> Teach them something. Make them laugh, but teach them something. We have a state election in 500 odd days. Yep. Do you think the current uh, incumbent will stay or will he get tossed out? Uh, no. I grew up a Labor voter, but God, it's getting hard these days to vote <laughs> for him. On that note, please thank <sighs> so the one and only George Capanaris. And I don't want to vote for the other guys. I just don't want to vote. He might have to. I might have to. My dad's going to roll over in his grave. Bali. Anyway, <laughs> let's go upstairs and have a flip air. Why not? Okay. And a cigarette. Thank you, Georgie. We can direct traffic. Love it, there you go. Good boy. <laughs> I love it. There you go. Our second guest, or our first guest, depending on which way you watch the show, yeah. George Capanaris. Hello again. I want to take this opportunity to record a bit of an editorial. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank you 
for taking the time to watch a recorded message that I made recently that was used for the premiere screening in Melbourne of the film The Promise, starring Christian Bale, Oscar Isaacs, and the French actress Charlotte Le Bon. Now, the idea was to support the movie and also alert people to the fact that the film was an important uh, product uh, to fight misinformation and propaganda about that period in history and that it needed as much support as possible. Now, because of your efforts, and especially your encouraging posts about the recorded message, can you believe a week and a half now after the screening, we're fast approaching 80,000 views. So thank you. If you haven't seen the movie, please put it on your watch list. It covers a time when the once mighty Ottoman Empire was starting to crumble during World War I. The story develops around a series of events and actions that changed the lives of millions of Christians in the region. I'm referring to the many Armenians, the Pontic Greeks and the Assyrians, people who all lived under Turkish rule at the turn of the 20th century. Now, I know through first-hand accounts in my life, in my family, that many hundreds of thousands were killed. Independent historians, though, are speaking of millions being decimated in a genocide. Successive Turkish governments have attempted to rewrite history by saying this uh, recording of history never happened. It's a lie. However, the Hollywood movie, The Promise, counters that view with a very moving narrative. And I chose, of course, to record the message to one of my forebears, especially those who didn't survive. And Lord knows there were many too many of them. They lost everything. And I also did it for the people who did survive, my grandfather and my great-grandmother, and they ended up in Australia many years later. But they risked everything to escape Ottoman Turkey. The message is meant to also challenge the status quo. The Australian newspaper saw the message that I recorded, and they published an article in this week's paper under the heading, Denikian Slams the SBS. Although it wasn't meant to be an attack on a former employer, I did want to encourage the television network to review its current stance on the genocide. SBS says it's towing the official government line. It was a mass killing of Armenians, but not a genocide. I beg to differ. My promise is to all those that follow, never to forget what happened more than a century ago. And again, I urge all governments involved to think again about the official line and consider what it would really mean to millions of people to officially recognise the atrocities as a genocide. Welcome back to Denikian, George Denikian and Theo Zagrafos joining us. And uh, Theo is our third guest in the opening program uh, we're putting together for uh, Facebook. And importantly, in this instance, Theo is uh, coming along as a contributor to talk politics, but also he's here in his official uh, capacity as a Monash councillor. You know, local government is important. They've got uh, some in, uh, amazing things that they need to attend to. And of course, when they do the job uh, poorly, we all complain. When they do it well, nobody says a thing. So with that in mind, welcome to the show. Theo? Hello, George. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. My important uh, responsibility is to get as much out of you as we possibly can without jarring and without taking you into areas that you're not comfortable with. Uh, so let's come back and talk about Australian politics, which has been very much in the news this week. Okay? We've seen uh, at federal level uh, all manner of uh, hue and cry about Christopher Pine. Uh, who is, I suppose, the Minister for Business or doing business in the federal government. And uh, he's a major player in South Australian politics, but he's also been a pretty strong character in the federal parliament. And he's, he, he stepped out of turn, he spoke, I suppose, out of turn, and it's come back to haunt him. Uh, what's been the feedback from your end, from your perspective? Well, I think um, it shows that in this day and age, um, politicians need to be mindful of um, what they say in any setting, whether it's off the record or in a private uh, event. Uh, we saw that a few weeks ago in Canberra where the Prime Minister made some remarks that were reported in the media by Laurie Oakes. Um, Laurie Oakes, by the way, chose not to follow uh, everybody else. Uh, was it a case of Laurie being Laurie and standing outside and wanting to show the world that mm -hmm. There are no rules, they're just my rules. Well, look, I don't know Laurie Oakes, but I can definitely say that um, there's more to why it was leaked um, than what's been reported. And uh, I think in this day and age, the Prime Minister and other members of Parliament need to always assume that whatever they say will be reported. 
Um, on that particular occasion, I don't think it did any harm to the Prime Minister. It made him look um, more human than the average politician. And um, I think that's probably a good thing for Australian politics. I totally agree there, but it did create some uh, disharmony uh, within certain factions of the Liberal Party who feel that uh, uh, the comments showed that uh, maybe it was the, the, the subject that, that we're talking about, and that is um, uh, marriage equality, is a lot closer to actually happening than they imagined it would be, a plebiscite or no. Well, it's certainly an issue that has um, a variety of views within the Liberal Party, both in Canberra and across the country amongst yep. our membership. Um, and the government had a policy at, before the last election, um, and I think that uh, they should keep to that policy before the next election. If they want to change their policy, um, they should take it to an election on this such an issue. And their policy was defeated in the parliament in terms of having a plebiscite. Um, I think that's the, res the responsible way to go about it. Now, you have your ear on uh, much that's being said in your local constituency. Mm. Uh, what do Monash uh, uh, constituents uh, saying about equal uh, <coughs> uh, marriage, equality in marriage? Do they want to see it? Do they want to change the, the standard that has basically been uh, in effect since Federation, since 1905? Mm. I can't give you a definitive answer because I haven't asked every single resident in my community, but the people that have spoken to me, um, I would say that it's not their number one concern. Yep. They want their government to deliver a budget surplus. They want their governments to cut down on waste. Um, it's probably not in their top five issues, if I could, people that have spoken to me. Having said that... But the drivers, the people who are actually pushing this, the lobbyists, <laughs> so to speak, those, those, those uh, uh, families that really want some uh, s some sense of uh, not continuity but uh, being made to feel like they're mm. as as good and as yeah. capable and i suppose they don't want to be seen as second class citizens no of course so they're, they're saying if if we have one have a partner mm. our, my, our feeling should be that they should be acknowledged in in a legal way yes just like everyone else is acknowledged and they have every right to seek that acknowledgement. I've got nothing against their quest and their campaign that has been going on for decades in this mm. country. Um, it's about where we fit it in, in terms of um, the legislative requirements of the parliament, the priorities of the government of the day, whether it's this government or any future government, or even if we go back to the Gillard government where there was um, private members' bills voted mm. on in the, in the federal parliament. It's certainly not something that is raised with me as a local councillor in any way Often of, of any great mass, no. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, let's, uh, so, uh, uh, let's, let's just take a moment and a pause, and on a scale of uh, one to 10, how has the week run for the Prime Minister? Um, I would say that um, it hasn't been the best week, unfortunately, due to some of the reporting around divisions within the party, um, and of course, the former Prime Minister, Christopher Pine, um, reporting as well didn't help the government. Christopher Pine then needed to apologise. Yeah. Um, but you're alluding never... to Tony Abbott, uh, yeah. distracting people in the in the uh, uh, in the in the Parliament and in Canberra, uh, and insisting that he has a voice as a former Prime Minister. He has a voice and he wants to make it a very loud one. Yeah, and I think he's entitled to um, to speak up from time to time on issues that he believes are important. He is a former Liberal Party leader and, as you said, a Prime Minister. That carries enormous weight, but it's also a matter of respect. Having said that, um, it's the government's role to lead and the Prime Minister's role is to lead and he doesn't need to be distracted if he remains focused on the job at hand. And that goes the same for ministers and members of the, of the government, members of Parliament. Um, so I think that uh, if the government continues to stay focused um, regardless of any potential division, they will be able to get runs on the board. Okay. Uh, let's, speaking of runs on the board and uh, things that are happening and uh, evolving as we, uh, as we uh, live, um, I noticed the Prime Minister did something revolutionary today, mm. yeah? something innovative. Uh, and he loves being uh, he's spoken the king. of as he's innovative, the king of uh, pre innovative. Uh, Prime Minister. Yep. So he's done something that we're doing in a, in a manner of speaking we're creating a program we're putting it on facebook we believe it's a new platform mm. uh, and we think it is uh, the way of the future in fact there are a great many people within the organization of facebook who want to spend billions of dollars to make um, facebook the new tv platform mm. so what did the prime minister do today 
Well, George, he visited the Facebook headquarters in Sydney, yep. the Australian headquarters. And would, he have, uh, would he have visited the headquarters if it was in Melbourne? Of course, he loves okay, Melbourne. Right. He, he gave $1.2 billion to And Melbourne. he loves trams. He loves trams and he loves uh, my community of Chisholm very much. He, he visited there this week as well with uh, Julia Banks, who's a great member of parliament. But he was at, in Sydney today and um, he was interviewed uh, live on Facebook. And of course, when you do that, Facebook users can be engaged by commenting and liking, and as we hope will be happening with this. at the moment. That's right. But um, did you get a sense of how many people? Uh, I locked, think there was about a thousand, a thousand at that particular time. But since then, there would have been multiple thousands more um, sharing that, that sharing and, and, and watching it and, yeah. and time and time yeah. again. But you mentioned Facebook, and, and there was an article this week that said that they're creating their own content in the same way that. Netflix has been in the previous few years. Yes. So Facebook itself will now um, be producing sh the television shows, uh, dramas, movies, and broadcasting that on their platform. So that's exactly where the future is. Um, we mentioned Tony Abbott, Peter Credlin, who's a, a, a journal these days in the Australian, wrote an article mm -hmm. about um, politicians using this media to um, to promote their agendas and the issues that they're talking about. This is exactly what media is these days. It's all um, digital. Mm -hmm. um, all the free-to-air networks in Australia, the ones that you served on for many decades, they're all creating content for that reason. And the users, the punters out there, um, they're using it even more so than what they're watching Australian free-to-air television. There are more Facebook users daily that watch free-to-air television. Well, That's there are a number of reasons for that. Yeah. One, you can take it everywhere it's, you go. That's right. Okay. Um, you can watch it whenever you want. Mm. So when I, was, when I first got into television, uh, those television networks were monopolies. Yep. If you wanted any information, you had to wait mm. 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, right. 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And you created habits. Mm. Now all those habits have gone by the by. Mm. All those technologies now are seeing new disruptors and I noticed that one of these new disruptors is Facebook. But it's doing it in, a, in an extraordinarily uh, exciting way, mm. as far as we're concerned, because mm. we're, we're joining, we're, we're jumping on board and, and creating our own content as we speak. But I think the, the fascinating thing is, is the better you do it, and the more engaging you mm. make it, uh, hopefully the audience will lock in, yep. uh, will, as they say, engage, and the, the word will be spread. It's a bit like what we used to say in the past, uh, word of mouth, good mm. word of mouth is important, bad word of mouth is also important because it, it'll hurt you. Here, it's word of mouth, mm. amplified, and not necessarily in real time, but That's global. Right. Absolutely. Which is an extraordinary tool if you do it well. That's exactly right, George. And the Australian community is speaking um, with their clicks. I mean, <laughs> the numbers don't lie, as we said. There are so many people uh, using social media for all facets of their life. We spoke about um, the government. They, they've cancelled licence fees this week, the federal government for uh, free-to-air networks. Now, you're talking because big millions of dollars there. Those licence fees, yeah. we're talking, I think, for 10 yeah. recently, the number was quoted at $23 million. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you didn't have to... If you don't have those onerous mm. uh, license fees to carry mm. or to pay, mm. then you can do much more with you the can, money that you, you have. You can create a new show. But what it shows is, just like the taxi industry here in, in Victoria, um, the new market isn't regulated in the same way that the traditional market has been, and therefore um, there is that, that, that those funds that are now being freed up and so it's, there's no limit now to what can be achieved, whether it's media or taxis or Uber or whatever else it is. Now, you touched on something mm. um, that alerted me to ask you another question. And we, let's bring this now to state politics. Um, Uber mm. uh, was uh, made legal in Victoria. The Andrews government made it uh, a legal uh, way to access a ride. Um, and the thing that stunned me is that uh, this comes after years and years and years of the taxi industry being uh, 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 weighed down with mm. onerous uh, licensing fees. Yep. So it's all well and good to talk about disruption, but what do you say to all the taxi 
license holders and mm. plate holders mm. who've paid not thousands, but in, in many cases, millions of dollars, assuming, again, we hear that term, assuming that this will be their nest egg, this will be their hedge against inflation, this will be their mm. hedge against uh, any rises in, in super, and being told now that those licenses are almost worthless. Well, they're not quite worthless, <coughs> but when you consider what they were paid mm. or paid out, mm. they are worthless. And, and Is that fair? It, it, well, it's not fair in the sense what's happened to them. Um, but there's two things to say here. First of all, they were promised um, various concessions and uh, compensation by the current state, Andrew's government. But Victoria, they haven't accepted them. And that hasn't been delivered. Uh -huh. So they're angry first because uh, of the broken promise. Okay. And of course you can understand that. They were initially angry at the previous Bailey government. But at least he said what he was going to do and did it, as opposed to Daniel Andrews that said, well, I'm, I will do this, but then he hasn't done it to give them the compensation that they're after. And of course, secondary to that, they're angry at the way that the market has been given a head start in, in their, from their perspective by the government to say that, well, why aren't you regulating Uber, for example, ride sharing? Is it a case now of the ATO, the Australian Tax Office, <coughs> coming in and being the they, sort of... Um, uh, the ATO sheriff? doesn't miss a tax dollar. Uh, they're on to it absolutely. They've been on to it now for three or four years. So it, could this be... It was a federal court ruling. So could this be a bit of a self-regulator in some respects? Bring back the power of Uber by saying to all and sundry, all right, if you're going to be a, an Uber player, understand yep. that the tax office wants to speak to you on a regular basis. Absolutely. The tax office will be looking at every single subcontractor, that those are the drivers. Yep to say, um, are you paying GST quarterly? Are you declaring this as income in your tax return? And if not, uh, we'll come after you. And, and also, the Uber, the company, the entity that actually is an international entity, is now obligated for the first time to give over to the ATO every single driver, their details, their tax return so number, their tax file number. So well, that lifts, lifts the, sca the stakes uh, appreciably and changes Absolutely. some of the... Uh, Uber's already had to change their model. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of changing, uh, let's change the subject for a matter. We've got uh, 500 plus days to the next state election. Yep, in Victoria. Um, in, in Victoria. Uh, how's Matthew Guy tracking as yep. the opposition leader? And how's the incumbent looking? with uh, 500 plus days still to go? Well, it depends on how you classify tracking. If you go by the published polls, the coalition is, um, is well placed um, in terms of in an election winning position. Yep. Um, the incumbent always has the advantage of incumbency. So um, I don't think anyone in the coalition is underestimating Daniel Andrews and his team. Um, I think in Victoria, every election is competitive. Mm -hmm. Even the ones where Liberals got decimated in 2002, it was competitive up to the last 10 days until we had some issues in our own party and um, it, was, it was a landslide to Steve Brax. So I think my, my feeling on it is, is that um, there are at least half a dozen seats that I can see changing, but the coalition needs at least seven to form government in its own right. I think a hung parliament um, is a possibility. Having said that, George, we're 18 months out. so. It's an eternity until the next election. 540 and days. Plenty of opportunities for a banana skin to uh, slip by and uh, unsettle both <coughs> players, both sets of players. We don't know what One Nation, One Nation will do. For example, will they contest the Victorian state election? Um, if they do, then that will have ramifications. Um, their preferences seem to go 50-50 at the federal level, but where they will go in some rural seats in Victoria, we don't know. Um, I think that Daniel Andrews many times it looks as though he wants to lose the election. Um, I think Matthew Guy um, has kept a very united parliamentary team. Which is not easy to do in opposition, It's is almost it? impossible to do. If you go back to since 1950s in Victoria, whether it's been the Labor, Democratic Labor Party in the 50s and their split, whether it was Jeff Kennett, who I've got a lot of time for and Correct. respect for, but even he was challenged five times when he was opposition leader. Matthew Guy has been very good at um, uh, giving the sense of uh, hard work ethic and that, yes, he is um, the leader, but he's happy to consult with and his team. And, and, all singing, and, and get, um, getting everyone to sing off the same hymn sheet. Well, they're doing very, very good work. Okay. The Shadow Ministry, uh, people like David Hodgett, David Davis, and many others, Georgie Crozier, 
fantastic. And yep. That's paying uh, dividends. dividends. As well, let's leave it there. Uh, you'll come back as often as we need you. Thank you. And more Thank importantly, uh, we'll get as we get closer to both the state election and and we'll talk it, uh, about federal matters as well. Uh, we'll get we'll get more in depth about uh, what are the sorts of drivers, what are the sorts of things that Australians, both at local government level, at state government level and at federal level, are thinking each and every week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, George. That's Theo Zagrafos on Dunekian. When we come back, we'll uh, let you know what's happening in our next episode of Dunekian on Facebook.